What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right, man, I'm going to talk about something uh, in the heavyweight division not associated with Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder, and that is Tyson, the real champion, <laughs> the real UK champion, Fury. And a somewhat suicidal uh, Tony Bellew. <laughs> Tony Bellew says, I punch harder than Fury, and he's fighting a cruiserweight. So Tony Bellew's trying to get in the ring with Tyson Fury for some who knows why reason. And I wouldn't mind seeing the fight, but look, man, that is a that's going to be that would be a massacre. And I don't care how long Tyson Fury's been out of the ring. He could fight he could fight Tony Bellew tomorrow, and Tony Bellew's gonna lose that fight. Uh Tony Bellew, in my opinion, man, he, you know, he needs to stop while he's ahead. And Tyson Fury is definitely the spot where he needs to stop at. <laughs> so anyway, hey, you know, thank you for everybody for subscribing and being part of the live streams that we've been doing. Uh, they've been very good. Had a really great one today that's up. So I hope that you guys would subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can attend the next one. Have very good conversations with very uh, knowledgeable boxing fans. And also, uh, thank you to everybody that's, that uh, supports the channel through the uh, Super Chat by watching the videos. I know I put ads in the videos, uh, but that really does help you know uh, support the cause that, we, that the channel's here to support. So thank you guys very much. So let me go through this article and talk about... <laughs> Tyson Fury, and also I'm going to talk about Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder a little bit because Anthony Joshua s- snuck into the United States, <laughs> into L.A., and if if Deontay Wilder is not does not have an immediately hire a uh, a private eye firm to find out where he is and go does go grabs that Ali bear trap and go look for him, <laughs> he's being negligent. Uh, so and but really, man, the guy that I'm looking forward to to enter into this heavyweight division conversation is Tyson Fury. And I I'm leaning to believe that this fight with Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua is going to happen. But really, I think that at the end of the day, the, the Tyson Fury, when he gets back all the way together, really is going to add. He's going to be the third. He's going to be the third leg to this stool that stands up the heavyweight division and puts it on that pedestal, you know, the third leg to that pedestal that the heavyweight division needs to be set on, man, is the best boxing, the true, you know, the true champion of all boxing, the heavyweight champion of the world. And Tony Bellew is talking this good stuff. I know he wants to make some, you know, make a, make some money, you know, come off this momentum that he got from David Hay, but you know, nah, dude, you're barking up the wrong tree. You barking up the wrong tree with Tyson Fury, man. So anyway, let me go through this article and then and then we'll talk about it. Then I'll also talk about uh this whole Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, and where Tyson Fury comes into play with this. Uh Bellew, I punch hot harder than Fury. He's fighting a cruiserweight. Last week, former unified heavyweight champion Tyson Fury issued a very strong warning to his new domestic rival, Tony Bellew. Bellew, who fought most of his career at light heavyweight before making the jump to cruiserweight and then eventually to heavyweight, believes he can beat Fury. Earlier this month, Bellew, 32-1 with 20 KOs, crushed former heavyweight champion David Hay in five rounds. Fury had been scheduled to face Hay on two occasions in the past. In both instances, Hay withdrew with an injury. Fury, at 6'9", and usually around 250 pounds when he's on form, has a massive size advantage over Bellew. He told reporters that he fears the possibility of permanently damaging Bellew in the ring. If he steps in the ring with the Gypsy King and I unleash hellfire on him, he's only a small man and I could damage and hurt him properly. You ain't messing with a David Hay who's 20 years out of date. You're meth- messing with someone six foot nine inches, 19 stones in the prime in the prime of me life who can knock down a wall. One of the hardest punches in heavyweight divisions, but they don't know it. Uh, Fury told fighthype.com. If I go in there and hurt him, what good is that? How does that make me feel knowing he shouldn't even have been in the ring anyway? Listen, we all need money. 
but he doesn't need money that badly to go and lose his senses and get smashed to pieces. Fury, who has been inactive since November of 2015, uh, when he shocked Vladimir Klitschko in a 12-round unanimous decision to capture four world titles, will finally return to the ring on June 9th in Manchester against Surfy Surfai, 23-1 with 21 KOs, who fought most of his career at cruiserweight. Bellew is laughing at Fury's next opponent, and he believes he's got more power than the former heavyweight champion. Uh, he says the only advantage that Fury has in the fight is size. He come out and said he won't fight me because I'm a cruiserweight and he'll hurt me. Bellew said to Sport Talk, well, G- well, Jesus Christ, he's only fighting a cruiserweight, isn't he? I think he understands that I'm a much more dangerous fight than anyone can possibly f- uh, he can possibly face right now. What? If Tyson uh, wants to make serious money, he knows where to come. He is awkward to fight. Uh, it, he is awkward to fight of the big guys, Al. But uh, I'm more tricky than him. I'm quicker than him. I'm stronger than him. What is he over me? His attributes are his attributes over me are his size, and that's all he has over me. I actually punch harder than Tyson Fury. Okay, Tony Bellew. You know, come back to reality, son. <laughs> come back to reality, son. That's not going to work for you, man. That's not going to work for you. First of all, he's fighting a cruiserweight because he hasn't been in the ring in three in uh in almost going on three years, and he's basically getting a paid tune-up fight to get into the ring, get active, whatever, what have you. But that's it. And he'll probably fight three or four guys. Hopefully, like one after a month. You know, one. A month, and the next one two months later, then the next one two months later, then the next one three months later, and just shake the rust off. You know what I mean? Now, if Tony Bell you was to fight Tyson Fury, then I'm quite sure he'd like to fight Tyson Fury right now, where Tyson Fury might have a little rust on him. But th- get out of here. Tyson Fury could just jab this dude. If Tyson Fury just wanted to, if he was rusty and out of shape, all he'd have to do is stick him in it, stick him with jabs. For twelve, or for what is a ten round fight because there's not any any belts on the line, you can just jab him for ten rounds, and it's a wrap. Jab, jab him, hug him, push him, lay on him. He's not winning that fight, man. It's, Tony Bellew is not. Tony Bellew is a light heavyweight. Tony Bellew got knocked out by Adonis Stevenson at light heavyweight, and I've seen uh, Tyson Fury in there with a the cruiserweight in one of my favorite cruiserweights, Steve Cunningham. And he knocked out Steve Cunningham. Now, Steve Cunningham did knock him down. But if you had, if I had to put my money on a fight between Tony Bell, you and Steve Cunningham, I'm going with Steve, I'm going with Steve Cunningham all day. I don't think Tony, Tony Bell, you can beat uh can beat Steve Cunningham. I think that would be a life and death fight with uh with Steve Cunningham, man. He's not I, I'm just not, I'm just not that impressed. And honestly, even the wins. For me, the most notable wins, you know, for Tony Bellew's career are David Hay. And David Hay's a cruiserweight. David Hay is a, a blown up cruiserweight who's honestly, man, his biggest fame. It's like every time he was supposed to be in a big, I guess he did fight uh, Klitschko, right? But man, come on. David Hay ain't never been anything great. Tony Bellew's not anything great. And Mike T- and uh, I can say Mike Tyson. And, and Tyson Fury, in my opinion, if he gets to the to the best that he can be, or even if he gets ninety percent to, to of his best, might be the best heavyweight in the world. I think I take him over. I take him over Deontay Wilder, unless Deontay Wilder, because Deontay Wilder can't catch him. Don't get me wrong. If he gets hit, it can be something. But the way that he moves, as shifty as he is, to be that tall, that long, and uh, have that good of footwork. And just be that awkward. I mean, the awkwardness of Tyson Fury really does. He's almost as awkward as Deontay Wilder is. And there's a certain amount of um, there's a certain amount of difficulty that comes with a fighter being awkward and you not being able to really judge what he's doing. I mean, he beat he beat Vladimir Klitschko in a breeze. I mean, it was a breeze. And I know some people will say, oh, you know, the rematch. He didn't really want the rematch. Whatever those issues are. Man, a fight with uh, Vladimir Klitschko would have went the same way with twice Tyson Fury twice. 
Because Tyson Fury's too big for Vladimir Klitschko to fight in the style that Vladimir Klitschko likes to fight. Where he likes to lay on a fighter. He likes to pull, push down on him. He can't do that with Tyson Fury. He's too short to do that with Tyson Fury. And that going into the fight, that's why I thought that Tyson Fury could beat him. It's because none of the things that Vladimir Klitschko can, would do to other fighters are really going to work that well with Tyson Fury. But Tony Bell, you doing it? No, man. I agree 100% with what Tyson Fury saying, man. Look, there's better ways to earn money than to go in there and get yourself hurt with a dude that big. And Tyson Fury knocked out, knocked Steve Cunningham out cold. <laughs> there was a cold, or did he take a couple seconds to get up? I can't remember exactly as if when he cuffed him. Because honestly, man, that was really sneaky, very crafty way that Tyson Fury knocked out Steve Cunningham by covering his head, pushing his head down to the left and just putting his head right where he wants it with his left hand, taking his hand off and coming right behind with that right. Oh my goodness gracious, man. That was just, it was dirty. It was beautifully dirty. Uh, And it's just that level of craftiness that Tyson Fury has. Cause I think Tyson Fury in a lot of the way, a lot of ways is a very natural fighter. And I think he's the best. I think he's the best heavyweight in the UK. Easy. If Tyson Fury gets all the way up, gets into shape, and, you know, him and Anthony Joshua's not beating him, man. I can't see it. I mean, I can't even really, I can't even envision it. I think it's that, I think it's that big a gap between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. I think he does, I think he does them worse. I think he does them worse than he does. I think uh, Tyson Fury does. Anthony Joshua worse than he does than he would have done Vladimir Klitschko, just because of the speed advantage, the size advantage, the length advantage. Um, I don't think that Anthony Joshua has one punch. He definitely does not have one punch knockout power. I mean, he can hurt you if he hits you with a couple of them. Um, that uppercut is something nasty. That uppercut that he hit uh, uh, Vladimir Klitschko was nasty. That is one punch that if, that. If Anthony Joshua hits you clean with, you can't go night night. But I think Tyson Fury is just too smart for that. And he'll see, be able to read what's going on. He's not robotic, right? Like Tyson Fury. He's not robotic like Vladimir Klitschko is. And I just think that's a lot. I just think that's a tremendous amount of a tremendous amount of trouble for Anthony Joshua. But Tony Bellew, without a doubt, dude, you're getting beat up, man. Now, Tony Bellew, in my opinion, could, you know, I would like to see Tony Bellew in there against you know, some of those cruiserweights, right? There's some good, there's some, you know, Gassiev and uh, Bradis and Usyk and uh, Dortikos, guys like that. I wouldn't mind seeing Tony Bell you fight at that weight division. I mean, honestly, man, he just needs to run a couple extra miles a night and he'll be down there at cruiserweight. He's not, he's a fleshy, he was a fleshy looking, he's a fleshy looking heavyweight. So getting down a little bit in weight, I think, you know, could allow him to fight those guys. But I don't really know if I don't even know if Tony Bellew is going to beat those guys. I'm just I'm just not that I'm just not convinced with Tony Bellew. Tony Bellew wants Andre Ward. I think he gets the brakes beaten off of him by Andre Ward. That's just my take. So, you know, Tony Bellew, man, hey man, it was fun watching that fight against David Hay. That was cool. Uh Tyson Fury, you need to stay away from him. Now on to the subject of Anthony Joshua coming to California, man. Why? I am really interested to know what he's in California for. Is he going to visit? Is it? Is this some type of situation where, hey, man, we might be able to get this fight in the United States, right? We can get a little secret meeting going together, which ain't secret anymore, and they can wind up that a lot of this back and forth talk is really, um, you know, promotion for the fight. If that would be the case, man, I would be ecstatic, man. I would really be really, really, really looking forward to that. But if not, man, really and truly, man, I would love, I think Deontay Wilder should go find that dude. I know he can find out what hotel has got. The boxing world's got to be small enough where you can find what this dude's hotel is. And, you know, what was the fight? What were the fights, flights coming in from the from the UK last night? Where is this dude going? You know, pay somebody some money. I know you got some checkles in your pocket to find out where this guy is, following some cameras and jump in this dude's face, man, and have it all out there for all eyes to see. 
for at very least for the for me to be able to have just for it's selfish reasons. I want to see these guys look eye to eye because that was something that was really missing from that otherwise incredibly uh you know uneventful fight between Anthony Joshua and uh and Joseph Parker. And by the way, a fight in which Anthony Joshua had a problem had a hard time dealing with the speed of Joseph Parker. And I don't believe Joseph Parker's as fast as Anthony Joshua then as fast as Deontay Wilder is. And those punches that he's getting hit with ain't coming like even the jabs aren't even on the same. They're not even on the same planet as Deontay Wilder. And that could be very well be why guys like uh, Roy Jones Jr. are, are <laughs> and the HBO ties a suggestion. Look, man, this dude's not ready. And yeah, there were some cats making arguments. Oh, Anthony Joshua, they, they're going to lash on to these. Some of these cats are going to lash on, latch on, excuse me, latch on to what Roy Jones Jr. said about Hey, you know why? Why fight? Why not fight in the UK, where you know UK fans are going to come to see you, and all that stuff? You know, if you want, can fight in front of eighty thousand people instead of five thousand people. You know, you can. I could see why somebody would want to latch on to that side of the argument, but the but the most pertinent part of the argument is that Roy Jones Jr. said Anthony Joshua was not at his peak. Like he still he needs some more fights to get ready for Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder's still at his is at his peak. Now, if Deontay Wilder, if Anthony Joshua thought Deontay Wilder, I mean that the peak of where Anthony Joshua is is above the peak of Deontay Wilder, he would be telling Deontay Wilder not to take the fight, not to take the fight. If that was a logic, but I don't think that's the case. I think he's saying, look, man. From what I saw you look, how I saw you looking against Carlos Takam, looking, you know, you won the fight, man, but you didn't bowl over. Anthony Joshua did not bowl over uh, Joseph, uh, I mean, Carlos Takam. Carlos, he got a TKO stoppage, which was a suspect, suspect uh, TKO over Carlos Takam. A dude that's probably, what, about five foot eight. (laughs) <laughs> five foot nine 250 pounds or whatever they just had no ability you know, i mean just the size difference and the length difference on those cats were significant and he had a difficult time with carl's to come and then to have difficulties with joseph parker somebody else who he's he has a significant size advantage over length advantage right height advantage all those advantages are on joseph parker's part to get in there with a guy that's taller than him that's longer than him that hits harder than him, that's faster than him, that's more awkward than him, that is a style of fighter he's never been in the ring with. I mean, Deontay Wilder's been in guy in the ring with guys whose styles are more sim- similar to Anthony Joshua. Even if you guys are definitely are not on the level of him, but a guy like uh, what's his name, White uh, Washington, I go Gerald Washington, you know. Pretty much same size, same body, same height, same size, basically solid fundamental fighter, you know, basically a C class, you know, a C class version of Deontay of uh Anthony Joshua, and caused him some problems until he landed that punch and put him to sleep. You know, so but at the same time, that is a style that Deont- that Deontay Wilder has fought and has had now had experience with. Maybe what they're saying is, hey, man, you need to go try to find somebody that's six foot seven, you know, somebody that's six foot seven, a little more awkward and can really, really hit and put you in danger so that you know how to what it feels like to take them shots. I don't think you can really find that in heavyweight boxing. So anyway, that's my take on what Anthony, uh, what uh, Roy Jones Jr.'s uh, take on that fight was. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, I'm just hoping it'll happen. It would be real fun for uh if Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder could, you know, pull up on Anthony Joshua, that would be funny. Uh, because, hey, man, you know, you can't get a restraining order on him in unless he already, you know, unless he uh, filed a restraining order in Los Angeles ahead of him showing up. <laughs> like, this guy's been threatening me. This guy's been threatening me for months on the Internet. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, man. Anyway, it is what it is, man. Again, I hope this fight gets made. You know, I ain't going to hold my breath. Uh, because it just, you know, it, it seems as if it's going to happen, but you just never know, man. You never know with some of these wishy-washy cats 
whether or not they really want to go get this money or not. But anyway, oh, but it was funny what Deontay Wilder said. And in conclusion, when Deontay Wilder said, hey, man, you want to go to <laughs> either the devil wasn't there <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or the or you lying or whatever it was he said, man, that was funny. But anyway, man, with that, I'm out. <laughs>